Beautiful day in the ocean, isn't it, Steve? Wonderful day. Oh, Wonderful day. I think day. we should pull into this house. What is this? Land ho! <laughs> oh, beautiful home under construction. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got here, Steve? Man, this is one of the current projects under construction. Oh, now, we've been here before, Steve. This is the same house that has the net zero party barn, right? This has that net zero party barn. And if you remember, at the end of that video, we showed a bunch of stone getting blasted. Yeah, just rock coming out of this granite ledge. That was the foundation of this place. Oh my gosh. And a year later, we're back and we got a real house. Look at this place. It looks like a New England farmhouse right here on the coast. This is high performance New England farmhouse. It's as good as it gets. This is good stuff, guys. Let's go take a tour. New England classic farmhouse. Let's get going. my friend Steve Basic. Steve is a Boston-based architect who works all over the country. But Steve, this is a project right in your backyard, right? Yeah, this one's just north of where I live a little bit. So Beautiful. We're up here on the New England coast. So we've got this classic farmhouse, right? It's got the white horizontal bead siding, black windows, a gorgeous gray metal roof. I love this elevation, Steve. This is so classic. Yeah, this is a, that's all the Borough Slope Channel product. And what's exciting about this is, is that, you know, architecturally, I tried to make it so that the, the front is somewhat unassuming, right? You mm -hmm. walk up, they're punctured holes, but the, the, the great stuff's on the other side of the wall. Oh, man, for sure. Let's go up, and I want to show these guys. Uh, you've got one little section here that they've got some temporary power coming, and you can see a little bit of the wall section. So you've got, uh, in this front porch, you've got some beadboard siding. Yep. But you've got a rain screen detail. Then it looks like you've got some foam. What's behind that? So we have two inches of rigid foam, and then it goes to a Sega My Vest okay. weather-resistive barrier, mm -hmm. and then that's on top of a half-inch Advantech ah, sheathing. So sheath. this is a bulletproof wall. Love and the, the rain screen here, you can see, it gives us all these drainage spaces. Lots and it of drains gaps. out the bottom. And... Uh, you know, it's it's what you want to put in this type of environment because like it. it's it can get nasty out here. So these windows with this deep sill, this window set back at the sheer wall. This is a two by eight, twenty four inch on center framed wall. So we have seven and a quarter, quarter inches to move that window oh, in and out. It's a two by eight wall. It's a too. two by eight wall. Yeah. Damn. So this is. We got some good performance decisions here. Yeah, you do. And what's in the cavity for insulation for that? In the cavity, wall? we did a two-inch um, spray foam of closed cell. It's the same Lapola 4G um, 2000, and then we finished the rest of the five and a quarter inches with uh, blown rock wool. Okay, I so. like it. Let's go inside, man. Man, look at this view. We're right on this estuary which eventually leads you out to the coast. Yeah. It I mean, is really pretty. It, uh, you can't frame nature much better than that. No, no. Right? And look how big your glass is back here, Steve. Is, you know, these are those Shuko windows. We talk about them all the time that, mm -hmm. you know, they'll make some monsters and we're about to go in there. And as big as that one is, that one's one and a half times that size. They're big. And uh, it looks like they're black on black. Are they're these... black on black. It's a jet black matte finish on those. And these are aluminum, right? These are aluminum. They're thermally broken. They're all triple glazed. But that window there is nine, a little over nine foot tall and a little over six foot wide. Ooh. I mean, it's a heavy window. Some of the other magic in here, Matt, is, you know, this is a 42 foot long room, 22 foot wide, and there's no columns in here, but we have the volume uh, yeah. ceiling. Yeah. So we have all these site build trusses. LVLs to uh, LVLs to cords. make up the cords. Yep. And if you haven't seen the video, go check out my video on the build show because I talk all about how I worked with the structural engineer and how that all came out. But uh, I wanted to point out one little thing um, about that for younger architects, younger builders, something to remember. When you look up here, notice the LVL isn't flush with the dormer. Mm -hmm. And that's because we're going to sheathe that in white oak and give it a finish. Well, uh. If I made that, your white oak would never have anything to die into. Right. So you got to kick that truss over smart. an inch and a half, and then you got that space to die into. Really smart. And tell me about these floors, Steve. These, these uh, white oak floors are gorgeous. So these this are an engineered 
European white oak. Mm -hmm. We have a randoms five, seven, and 10 inch. It's a character grade, meaning nice that- thick uh, wear layer. And character grade, meaning you've got a little bit we of We got knots. a little bit of knots and a little bit of movement to it, so. Look at that too, you got a nice thick wear layer. You could easily sand and finish this several times. And because it's got that plywood base on there, yep. it's gonna be nice and stable. It's not it, gonna move. It's cut, gonna be nice warp. and stable and it's back cut. I like right? that a lot. You look, if you flip it over, it's all back cut. Okay, they back curved it. Yep. Yep. Smart. I love it. Let's go, let's go show these guys this incredible fireplace you've got going on here. Who is the uh, who's the builder and who's the interior designer on here? So I worked with Christina Creston. Um, design. She's the interior designer, did a phenomenal job. She just does a beautiful job. And then the builder is Howell Custom Building Group. And I can't say enough about them and their lead carpenter, Brian. Yeah, Brian showed us around the barn last time Brian, we were here. Yeah. What so, a great builder. I, they're, they're Super impressive guy. There's not many builders like Brian in no, the world. Brian is one he detailed is, smart dude. He, he is into it. And but. speaking of which, uh, Brian was here a little earlier. He had to take off, but he gave me a little tour of this fireplace. So when they were laying up the stone, this master mason uh, that they're using, uh, Brian made this for him. This is a template so that he can pull this out later and then slide his mantle in. And you'll notice on the side, he's got a little sill sealer on here as a bond breaker. So that mortar is not gonna stick to that. And he'll be able to slide that out uh, here's that sill sealer right on the side here. That's acting as a bond break. So when he mortars that in, it's not going to stick to this Advantech uh, plywood that he made it out of. Probably some leftover sheathing from the job. And now he'll be able to slide his mantle in. And you've got this giant stone hearth. These beautiful stones that the mason just cut and formed around. I'll tell you what, guys. Let's uh, go up and show them the master next. Yeah, so the room right above this. Killer. Let's Let me check upstairs. It. Hey Steve, before we go in the master, let's uh, show these guys these windows and how you install those. Walk me through this. Yeah, so these are your typical European tilt turn, right? There's the tilt version, tilts in about seven inches for venting, for cleaning, moves in. Like I said, it's a jet black matte finish. It's actually a true simulated divided light. When you look down in there, it's got bars between all three pieces uh, of yeah. glass. Smart. So, and then what's going on with this taping detail? So this material looks like Sega's uh, My Rest. That's right? the my that's vest. the My Vest 500 SA. It's self-adhered uh, membrane. It comes up, turns into the corner. We put a back dam on there, slope sill. We install the window. We do a perimeter foam seal, and then we use a Sega tape on the inside and then we bring our wood trim into this. Okay, so this Sega tape here is just for air sealing detail. It's just an right air there. sealing, backup air sealing detail. The same thing happens on the front of the window. Got it. And man, the first thing you're gonna notice when you come into this master is boom, <laughs> you've got that, that amazing view. I mean, huge windows, amazing view. God, this is gorgeous back here. Yeah. But from a detail, uh, I know this is minor, but I was talking to Brian, the builder earlier. This is a, this is a blue board plaster install here. Yep. And I hadn't seen this bead before. This is kind of an interesting corner bead. You can see this corner is really um, kind of a real sharp, durable corner. This is the corner that the plaster is beading to. And then this is left uh, undone because he's gonna put a sill there. So you'll notice after the wind is in and taped, then he puts a, uh, additional kind of sub sill down. That's probably a piece of yeah, just uh, some blocking and stuff. They three quarter like, plywood yeah. Advantech. Then this gets nailed on, and then his sill will go down. So everything's nice and crisp. The plaster it's, just did a it real nice It gets covered job. up. And the other thing to notice too, the wire dangling here. We have motorized shades, so we have these built-in cavities in all of the windows that have a metal cover and roll down shade. So Got it. So that shade will be, just press a button, hit a button roll on down. And it'll roll on down and be and, light blocking. And look what a beautiful job Brian and the guys at Hal did on these uh, gorgeous oak beams in this yes. uh, vaulted ceiling. In the when master. you get that white oak floor in here going against that, waking up to that, I mean, you don't need artwork in this house when you frame mother nature like that. Gorgeous. You know? Gorgeous. This Love is actually a, a great opportunity. You can get a close up of our roof. Oh, yeah. There we go. Right? So, so what color is that, Steve? That's a beautiful that's gray. That's a dove gray. We use it quite often. It's light enough so that it doesn't have that 
uh, low emissivity where it's going to heat up like mm -hmm. a black roof or a dark bronze roof. But it's it's a really a classic color. It goes really well with the white. It's real matte finish and, um, too, is what I like about yeah, that. Yeah, it's got that matte finish. You know, down below there, if you can take a peek down in there, you'll see the kick out flashing. Okay. So it's, you know, Brian does it right. You can see right down in the corner. Uh, you see how that water just gets kicked out away from the wall. I know you saw the video, but we're gonna go over it anyway. Let's see it, let's talk so about it. So the husband wanted a deck. I call it a morning deck. He's like, oh, just give me a deck. I wanna go out there and be able to stretch and take in the view. All you right. don't put a house in this location. You wanna appreciate it every yeah. day. Yeah. So we have this deck. The thing about this deck, Matt, is it's totally thermally broken. Ah. It's hung off the side of the wall. How about that? And nothing comes back into the house. That's cool. So it's bolted on, basically. Yeah. And you want to talk about details? Look at the little floor joist hangers. Mm -hmm. We actually cut those to drain water. Oh, wow. So we don't get any water build up in the joist hangers. That's awesome. Everything's fully water managed. The little two by twos there, we're going to get an Epe sleeve of a post. Those are pre-drilled to uh, coordinate with the cable rail. Looks to me like that's hot dip galvanized too. And it's hot dip galvanized, painted black. Beautiful work. It's Brian's so good, isn't he? He is good. <laughs> and there's our Shuko lift and slide door. Love it. Locking it in. But you know, we can't come to a gorgeous house like this without showing you the guts, the boiler room, we all gotta, the We gotta get down to the belly of the beast. You know, I always wanna go to the behind the scenes area. Let's go show these guys what the basement looks like. You know I love a good basement mechanical room. Steve, what are we looking at here? This is your basement installation, I'm this assuming. This is that um, La Pola 2000-4G uh, uh, has a GWP That's of a mouthful one. right there. It is, it is. I always have a hard time with it. <laughs> and then it's but, been sprayed uh, with an intumescent paint over there. It's sprayed with that, so it's a 15-minute ignition barrier. So it has to have a cover. I but, like uh, that. But yeah, it gives it that cave-like appearance. And look how organized Brian is with all his mechanicals. Yeah, he He's does. got his steam humidifier from April Air here. He's got his main panel. He's got his Kohler generator panel. Another two panels. This giant gutter. I mean, he's really, really organized. Just well love stuff. This. All of the water. Check Manifold. this out, yeah. So we've got Vega Pex going on here, and it looks like the plumber uh, has labeled everything, but he's coming back later with a more formal and uh, yeah, that's nicer just temporary. label system. But also notice all the lines are insulated yep. after they leave the manifold. Yep. So basement's got some uh, playroom down here. Some it's got play some playroom. We have uh, this here is the, the TV room. We mm -hmm. have a little landscape oriented fireplace. Cool. Uh, place for the TV, nice big couch. I love the millwork down here. And then, yeah, this is all nickel gap. And, uh, you know, we, we take in that view, all three stories. Oh, wait, even the basement has that even view. Even the basement has that view. We got Jeez. a door to the outside. And then this is basically the game room. Pool table, ski ball, okay. air hockey, a big hangout couch. Um, Beautiful. I mean, everything you can ask for as a kid, right? What's up with the step down here? What so we got going on we here? have a step down here because this is actually the fitness room. So we have a, a powder room here. We have some storage. Oh, we got some Schluter right but there. We drop this section so we get that elevated height. So when you're on your treadmill, any of the machines, and uh, and actually this is this height was sized. You can sit in here and jump rope if you can believe it. Is that right? So yeah, yeah. That's, that's where that height comes from. You know, and we still have the view. When you get up on your treadmill, you got you got a view that? still. We got a, a whole oh. other system here. Oh, I like this. Look at all this equipment, Steve. We, so we got a Mitsubishi uh, heat pump system. Yes. And probably the hyper heat on the outside. So this yep. will still make hot air for us, even if it's like minus five out. Right. We've got a nice April air uh, filter, whole yep. house filter right there. And then I'm assuming this is an ERV. That's our ERV, Renew Air ERV. Mm -hmm. That goes out. And the ERV, actually, this ductwork, we have a switch that's right next to the fireplace. So if we want makeup air, if we're starving that fireplace, we can hit the switch. This thing turns on and feeds air into the house. Ah, and that's what that other box is down here. That's this what the is other makeup box. air, right? Yeah. So. I've never seen that before. Electro Industries makeup air system. Yep. 
and you've got two eight inch ducks it looks like coming into a y, outside, yep. which comes in here and then dumps into the uh, return, return side system. of the furnace right so you don't necessarily need that air to be dumped right at the fireplace right, it doesn't matter we just need that cfm on this side of yep. our air barrier i love that I also like these plywood walls down here for a mechanical room. That's really, really smart. Putting some yep. plywood in gives you some space. And we got that blind door, so when ah, it's closed. That's cool, kind of a hidden door. Have that. Yeah, we can't close it with that's that right. baseboard, but, uh, but it'll have that nice flush finish there and just go away. I love it. Let's close up the video, Steve, by going outside and showing these guys some exterior details. I'm with you. We'll see you outside. Steve, give us the details back here. So remember, we're on the coast of New England. Yep. So what does that mean? It means we probably have access to the worst possible storms oh, yeah. that this house or that this area sees, yep. right? This house is, you're standing out at the edge of the dock, mm -hmm. storm in your face. Yep. So what does that mean? All out water management. For sure. Right? So when we look at this, we start with the windows. Mm -hmm. They have their own weep system yep. and built-in water management system. That drips down to the sill. The sill has a little space under here. Remember we talked about ah, the siding. Yeah. This is a one by eight slope channel. It's sitting on a three quarter inch furring strip. Mm -hmm. So we have these 24 inch air channels that basically drain the water out the bottom. We have a full screen down at the bottom mm -hmm. here and if you look up, you see that black line under the soffit. So oh, yeah, it's basically air soffit. open there. So the space behind here is basically pressure equalized. So what it means is water can't jump that three quarters of an inch because there's no force to be able to push it. Or once that water right? gets in, it's just gonna it's run It's gonna get out in harmlessly. and we use gravity in our favor yep. and we drain it out. Now where we have the window sill. I don't know if we can get a picture, but if you look up here, the siding is actually stopped about a quarter of an inch short ah. behind this facer. So even though we have the window here, this airstream can come it's out. It's coming out there too. So the rule of this rain screen is we have the down and out for gravity water, mm -hmm. but we also have what I call the up and away. If there's any water in there, we have this airstream that can that basically dry out that cavity Wonderful. and bring that moisture out. Wonderful. Look what we did at the basement. You mm -hmm. can see here, we have a drainable insulation. It's a mm -hmm. tough and dry system. It goes okay, around yeah. the whole foundation system, mm -hmm. takes the water down to a perimeter drain. Perimeter drain takes it out, gravity fed down the hill, drains it away. So any water that we get in here is taken care of. You notice Brian's green line that's his grade line, I'm assuming. Yeah, so I did a full set of drawings showing grade as I traced it around the mm, foundation. So, so that he could. He was be able to come out here and spray that. So now his excavator knew where to backfill to. They knew where to bring the tough and dry to. Love it. And then, uh, you know, it's it's all about managing water. Speaking of good details, check this out. The sill right here, it's actually the same as this one over yeah, here. He, Brian made a sill from mahogany right here. And you can see this mahogany is then getting painted. There's your uh, threshold for the door. And if you can get underneath there, there's a kerf right there. So any water comes down and hits that kerf, it's gonna drain out. It's just got a coat of primer on there now that'll get painted at some point. But what a great detail, especially in a thick wall. Two by eight framing, plus two inches of insulation, plus your rain, rain screen. screen. Plus like the 10, siding. 10, 11, 12 inches thick on the wall. Yeah. Just a really, really pretty look. But I can't stress enough, you know, when you're, you know, as an architect, you, you sit there and you dream about having sites like this mm -hmm. until you get the job. And then you have <laughs> nightmares about jobs like this because it's like, great, I got that job by the water. So what does that mean? Well, it means that there's some sunny days out of the year, but there's also those 10 some storms that just pound, the pound house. this house. And uh. so, you know, getting it right. Howell Custom Builders, Brian, I can't say, you know, there, there's a better team. Brian's we, good, man. Brian's really good. He did really good. Now, we've got some other details we want to show, but we're out of time for today. So I think what we ought to do, Steve, just to not make this video super long, is let's come back and show these guys 
the pool and cabana house and the details are over there. It's one of my favorite spaces here. It's I mean, I love the house, but that pool house is killer, man. Let's wrap up it's now, killer. guys. Stay tuned for the next video where we're gonna give you a tour of the cabana, the pool. It's totally finished. It's gorgeous. And there's some details over there. And I have a couple tips for you on ePay and a few other things that Brian taught me that uh, I didn't know before. So this is gonna be a great episode. If you're not following Steve, look for a link in the description below to find Steve's videos on buildshownetwork.com. Sign up for our newsletter because he's publishing every Friday. And if you sign up for our newsletter, I'm gonna send you an email every Friday telling you what's new across buildshownetwork.com. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. New content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.